Welcome to the Anna Bemis Palmer Museum. Today we're going to give you a tour of our artwork exhibition. Let's start with our Palmer case. This case is reserved for items donated by Anna or related to her or her family. Currently, we have a few of Anna's certificates from organizations she was involved in during her lifetime, although there are several others that didn't fit in this case. Anna married twice. Both husbands were military men as well as teachers. Robert Irvin Cutler, RE for short, served in the Civil War and joined the Grand Army of the Republic following the war. This was the veterans organization for Union soldiers. He was a teacher and a textbook author. They stayed married until he passed away. Anna remarried Orlando Gray Palmer, who was also a military man. He served in the Spanish-American War and went on to be a major in World War I. He was friends with Teddy Roosevelt and a member of his Rough Riders. Apart from the military, he was a teacher and a lawyer. The items in this case will continue to rotate every few months with other items relating to Anna and her family so that people can learn all about Anna and her legacy will live on. Next stop is photography. Here on the table are several photos taken at two different ordnance plants in Nebraska during World War II. You can see safety as a priority. They are checked as they enter and exit, constantly stay clean, and notice their hands are colored in this photo on the right. This is because they put chemicals in the soap that would turn red when coming into contact with TNT residue. You knew your hands were clean when all the red was washed away. In this case, we have several vintage cameras, as well as other camera equipment. Here you can see photos of our courthouse and city auditorium. Above this case is a bit of an optical illusion. From far away, this photo looks like trees on a mountain, but once you get close enough, you can actually see it's soldiers on top of that hill, watching a rodeo on Christmas Day during World War I. We are lucky enough to have two different photo albums from the Spanish-American and Philippine-American Wars. They represent two different units, the 51st Iowa and the 1st Nebraska Divisions. You can see as they go from training, to enjoying the high seas, to the war itself. We took these photos to a printing company and they were able to enlarge them for us. I think they turned out pretty cool. In this corner, you'll see more war photography. These include photos from World War II, the Spanish-American War, and this top item shows members of the Civil War doing a concert. There are even two albums for World War II filled with headshots of sailors and photos taken by George Zavodny during his time in the service. On this table, you'll see more vintage photos, including my favorite, Company A, 1st Nebraska, arriving in the Philippines. The day that they arrived, torrents of rain came down, and the men were forced to march through it. Next up is our painting section. All along this wall are paintings done by Roy Tucker. Roy was born as William Ray Tucker in 1895. He helped found the Ag Society here in York and worked for the Livestock Sale Company for 44 years. He earned many awards during his lifetime and also was an avid painter. Here you can see a collection of items he painted, mostly in the 1950s and 60s, although this one in the top corner was done by his son Windsor. It's said that people that knew the both of them thought that Windsor was the more talented of the two, but Windsor didn't hold the love for it like his father did. Around the corner here you'll see several landscapes and flowers painted by Luella Ells. Luella was a school teacher who loved to travel. Next to those is a painting of Anna's house. This was painted off a photograph because the original house was torn down shortly after Anna passed away. No one could afford the mansion, it was very expensive to heat, and the church next door purchased the property to turn into a parking lot. Continuing on through our painting section, you'll see several Western themed paintings, two of which were painted by Jean McDonald. Jean lived a hard life. His mother died when he was 12, and his father left him with his grandparents at their ranch outside Alliance, Nebraska. When he was 17, he tried to strike out on his own. He hopped a fast-moving train, and his leg was unfortunately caught underneath, leading him to losing the bottom part of his leg. The government stepped in at this point, as they had a program for people in similar situations. They moved him to live with his uncle here in York County, where he attended art classes at the high school. He learned he had a love for drawing comics, and when he went off to art school in New York, he started drawing for Batman, Superman, and Flash Gordon. Ben Zerson was quite the character. Growing up, he suffered from a lung condition, and the doctor taught him breathing exercises. Through these, he learned how to expand his chest, and got so good at it, he broke the world record. He eventually joined the Ringling Brothers Circus to showcase his talent, and later in life, went on I've Got a Secret and Ripley's Believe It or Not. 
He was also a world championship wrestler, a safety inspector, an original member of the Glenn Miller Band, playing trombone and banjo, and he owned a sports bar in Pender, Nebraska, where this painting was hung for several years. There are several other paintings on display, including this rather large one done by Chad Keel. From the 1970s to the 1990s, each summer, York would send their sixth graders, the summer before their sixth grade year, to Camp Calvin Crest in Fremont. These kids were going to three separate elementary schools, but would soon be going to school altogether at the middle school. This was so they could meet and bond and develop friendship before the school year. The program ended when the three elementary schools collaborated into one building. Chad Keel was the artist in residence in 1979 and took several photos of the camp, which he later painted on this canvas. It's said to be so realistic that people can recognize themselves in the painting. In this corner, you'll see a painting of Gerda Pearson. She was the oldest living pioneer in York County when this was painted in 1950. It was commissioned by her daughter and painted by Bill Moomy when he was only 24 years old. Bill was multi-talented in art and sports. He won an Olympic medal, played football for the University of Nebraska, and was named Athlete of the Century during York's centennial celebration. Moving on to our pencil sketch section. In this glass case are sketches done by Esther Johnson. My favorite is of the cat, of course, since I have two of my own. On top, you'll see a sketch of John Lett's house. John was one of the post commanders of our local Grand Army of the Republic, mentioned earlier. Moving on to our quilting area, currently there are several quilts on display, but this isn't even all of the quilts in our collection. We actually ran out of wall space. These quilts are all from the early 1900s. You'll see several different designs, like one with lanterns, a few crazy quilts, one with autographs from a family, and one inside a cradle that is made up of patches taken from feed bags. During the Great Depression, feed bags were printed in different colors, and people would make things like clothing, blankets, and doll accessories. Also on this wall, you'll see several examples of embroidery, including this one of the state capitol. Behind you, you'll see a table full of tatting pieces. There are several pot holders, table decorations, and even a collar. My favorite is this card table cover that features the four playing card suits. Next to these, you'll see some really cool blankets and rag rugs. I think everyone had at least one of these in their house growing up. I definitely remember a blanket like this and several rag rugs as well. We are very lucky to have a large collection and they're all in great shape. In this case, you'll see several examples of woodworking, such as fruits, animals, and other items. Check out those really cute mice figurines. In the bottom, you'll see several beaded pieces, several of which are Native American artwork. There is also a peacock, which is actually a lamp. On this wall, you'll see a few examples of stained glass. These pieces are quite fragile, but are very colorful and fun to look at in the lighting. This hanging basket was purchased on the Oregon Trail. On this table, you'll see what was once a Guinness Book of World Records holder for the largest hand-drawn maze. This maze was drawn by Eric Eckert. He broke the world record three times, and this one stood for a couple of years before being beaten in 2020. The maze is more than a thousand feet long, took 160 hours to draw, and 160 Sharpies to complete. Eric said he solved it as he drew it, and the hardest part was filming himself the entire time, as they would not accept it unless it was proof that he drew it all himself. On to our music area. In this case, there are several musical instruments, such as phonographs, a trumpet, and a drum played at the Battle of Gettysburg by a captain in the Union Army. Still in music, you'll see several items relating to a guy named James Asher Parks. Parks went on to music school in Chicago, then moved to Nebraska, where he became the supervisor of the Nebraska Conservatory of Music in Lincoln in the 1880s. He later moved to York, Nebraska, where he taught music at York Public Schools, was the stage manager at the Opera House, and ran a music studio. His store expanded into the J.A. Parks Music Company and was very successful. Parks was also an accomplished writer. During his lifetime, he wrote more than 1,700 musical pieces, some for church, some for holidays, some for the military, amongst other themes. And he also published 90 books, plus several operas. We are very lucky to have several pieces of music that he composed, as well as a few items relating to different productions he put on. We even have a pair of his pointed shoes, which you can see here. And finally, we have our visual arts category, featuring York's very own Fred Niblo, or as he was called here in York, Frederick Leadkey. Fred was born here in York and went on to co-found the Academy of Arts and Sciences. Yes, that Academy of Arts and Sciences. 
He even has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. These two binders are compiled research done by previous museum curator Kent Bedian. Inside are several clippings, photos, and documents relating to Fred's early and later life. Fred went on to direct several big budget pictures like Ben-Hur, The Mark of Zorro, and The Three Musketeers. This year he would be celebrating his 150th birthday. He was quite accomplished at silent movies, but once talking was added, he wasn't able to keep up and sort of faded out into obscurity. Thanks for taking the tour with us today. Up next to the museum is a display on the history of York County. We hope to see you there.